Hey everyone, how are all my favorite orca torches out there? Okay, it's Baron here and we're broadcasting live for Orca Torch, not just locally, not even regionally. We're broadcasting live for Orca Torch to the rest of the world, to an international diving community. And to prove that point, tonight we have with us an international guest. She is from South Africa, literally the other side of the world. And she is not just a photography coach, she's not just a photography judge, she is an underwater photographer as well as a writer. Get that? She's also a writer. So she writes for Wet Pixel, she writes for Scuba Shooters, she writes for Underwater Photography, and she writes for international magazines like uh, X-Ray Diving Magazine, right? Now, Kate Jonker will be joining us soon and she's not also, she's also a dive guide and get this right, Kate Jonker is also a dive boat skipper. Now, we want to welcome our guest of honor, Kate Jonker with us from South Africa. Are you ready everyone to welcome Kate Jonker? And here's Kate. How are you Kate? Hi, I'm fine. How are you doing? I'm great Kate. We are very honored to have you uh, with us tonight in this live stream with Orca Torch, Kate. <laughs> Hi, uh, thanks for having me. Hello, everyone. Now, Kate, um, do, do we have any one of us are from South Africa, from where Kate is? Do we have anybody from there? Can you sign in into the comments below? Anybody in, in the <coughs> South, uh, anybody in South Africa, anybody especially like in Malaysia? Oh, okay, tell you what anywhere in the world sign in the comments box below and we'll be monitoring we want to say hi to all of you and it's a funny thing you know because uh what kate and i have been discussing uh, just now it is actually kate you were saying that it is spring right now it's spring it is yes yesterday was the first day of spring first of september so yes and how cold is it over there well, yesterday it was about 10 degrees. Today it's warmer. It's about 24. We've got lovely sunshine outside today. Okay, and in Malaysia for us, no change at all. Every day is 30, 35 degrees Celsius. <laughs> we have rains yep. throughout the year and heat throughout the year, you know. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. so um, everyone, Kate Jonker is here with us. And Kate, you, you're a dive boat skipper, right? How is that? How, how is that like? I mean, I, the, the only thing I know about the boat is which direction it goes and uh, where's the exit or entrance. That's about it. Don't let me near heavy machinery, you know? <laughs> well, that's basically all I know too. So, um, yeah, it's uh, my husband and I own a diving center in, in Cape Town called Indigo Scuba and he has to take his students diving sometimes. So someone has to skip. So it's me. I land up skippering the boat. I tell everybody when to get ready. They roll over backwards into the water and they go and they do their dive. I'll go around and I'll pick them up. So, yeah, it's fun. I love it. It's, it's really amazing when people come up and you see the excitement on their face after they've had an amazing dive. Yeah. Well, Kate, uh, I'm just going through the comments right now to see if uh, anybody has uh, said anything. So I'm going to ask you uh, to join us for this. And uh, because uh, right now, we're going to tell our viewers about our giveaway. So every live stream that we have, right, we have something for our loyal fans, for our loyal viewers, right? And tonight is no difference because tonight we have with us the D530V, this is an underwater video light that we'll be giving away to two lucky winners during this live stream with Kate Jonker, South Africa. Now, let's uh, show you how the D530 video light looks like. So I'm just going to go and show it to you very quickly. This is the D530 underwater video light. And this light actually comes with the snoot package. 
So the snoot goes into the light like this. Right, and then you get to switch it on with a side switch over here. So it's operated like this, you have a side switch and there is your snoot. Okay, you can see there's a pinpoint of light here, but if I remove the snoot, then you will see that it's a very bright beam of light. So this is a D530V, which Kate will be talking about more later. So I'm just going to show you that this is the D530V, which is featured in our giveaway for tonight. Right, now I'm going to talk to you about uh, Orca Torture's social media handles. So I'm going to put up these are uh, the social media handles for Orca Torch. You can see that we have for Facebook, for Instagram, for YouTube, and we have our website over here together with the service email. Kate, what do you think about the D530V since uh, you've been using it for a while now? Uh, in brief, what do you think about it so far? I think it's brilliant. It's got a really nice strong beam. So for snooting, it is excellent. Um, I've got one here. I use it on my rig all the time. And it's just lovely. It's, it's hard wearing. It's sturdy. It's rugged. Um, the beam is pretty narrow for snooting. That's excellent. And also as a normal torch as well. You know, I use it as a focus light. It's a constant light if I just want to do um, ambient light or um, torch photography. So it's all right for underwater photographers. Yeah, all right. Um, we have some comments coming in. Let me just have a look. Uh, all right, let's see here. We've got... Okay, let's see if there's anybody from South Africa, uh, Kate. Okay, we've got... Okay, Li Peng says, Li Peng, Li Peng, Li Peng, Li Ping, is it? Says, hi, Kate. She seems to know you. Uh, Where's she from? He, she? Li Ping. Malaysia. Mal Malaysia, okay. <laughs> All right, we have some Malaysians here. We've got Joe, Joe, Joe Flowers, right? Hi, Kate. We've got, oh, you've got quite a number of fan base here, Kate. You've got Jess, Jess Hitchcock. And, uh, Cape Town. Yeah, all right. We've got somebody from Cape, Cape Town. Uh, there's Hi from Belgium. We've got Cart Storms from Belgium. We've got Paul. Paul is from Cape Town, Kate. Paul's from Cape Town. And uh, we've got Blanco. Netherlands. I don't even know what time is it in the Netherlands, but thanks for joining us, you know. <laughs> okay, so we've got a few. Okay, um... Oh, Li Ping just mentioned she's he she's from Malaysia, and uh, it's an honor of getting to know Kate. Right, you've got a fan here, Kate. <laughs> now, um, I'd like to talk to Kate about um, to know get to let's get to know Kate a little bit more. So let's see where Kate is coming from, and Kate, tell us more about yourself. Yeah, I think you've done a really good introduction. You basically covered all the points. So, yes, I'm an underwater photographer. I'm a writer. Um, I teach underwater photography courses for myself and for my husband's um, dive center in Cape Town. And I just love sharing whatever I can with underwater photographers to help make photography journey much easier and simpler and through photography in an easier way than I did because, you know, I learned from, from, from the ground up and I made a lot of mistakes. So it'd be really nice to help other people skip and make their underwater photography much, much easier for them. So yes, that's where I live, Cape Town. It's on the southern tip of Southern Africa. And most of my diving is in, in False Bay, which you can see there. And you'll see there's a little thumbtack that's where I live. I live in a little town called Gordon's Bay. That's where we have our dive center. And yeah, it's year-round diving in South Africa. Absolutely beautiful. So we have Kate. Yeah, she said she says that it's year-round diving. And I think she means it's uh, with wet suit. But we also see Kate in a dry suit. I wonder if we can find that picture to show uh, Kate. You were in a dry suit and it looks like it's really cold, right? Let's, let's check this out.
Ah, that there photo is. there is our normal <laughs> diving. Yeah. Yes, there's me. Um, that's my dry suit. I think the older you get, the colder you get. And I've got to a stage where I just cannot dive in a wetsuit anymore. Just, to, you know, um, our water temperatures are probably between sometimes 10, sometimes 15, sometimes 20. So you never know what you're going to get when you get in. Um, so I dry, dive in a dry suit and it, I think the average water temperature is about 15 degrees. Yeah, if you need, if you take ten not to dive that, that quickly, so staying quite still underwater, taking your pictures, you need to stay warm. So that's why I do and dry suit on my dives here. Yeah, because we know how it feels, right? When it gets cold, even in Malaysia, sometimes you know when you have your hands trembling like that, it's pretty hard to hold the camera. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's so cold i can't even pick a button or even <laughs> let it my bc so yeah it does it can get cold after a while yes what is this light here ah now that's the orca torch d710 and i use that that's one of the torches that i use when i'm guiding underwater photographers it's a real torch it's got some really nice features if you hold the button down for the, the button down for quite a while, then it goes extra bright and you let your finger off, it goes goes back to normal again. So it's really doing things on the reef to show people stuff. And also just if you're taking a dive and just want to have a look around, it's also a to take with you into the water. And Kit, um, what we're going to do now is to ask your fans here um, if you guys girls scuba shooters scuba divers if you have any questions for kate put them down into the comments because uh, we'd like to see your questions so that kate can help you answer them uh, this is kate jonker from south africa she's an award-winning underwater photographer as well as a writer and boat skipper <laughs> okay so put your questions down into the comments if you've got anything for kate we'll 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 be checking the comments off and on now kate um you know, you've come a long way from the first time you started, but um, for every great person, of course, we want to know how did you start up with underwater photography? Yes, my husband's uh, a scuba instructor and I follow him around with his... There's a very old photo of me. <laughs> um, I used to husband around with his students and take you know, just get, I got bored, so I decided, right, I'm going to get my camera and I'm going to their experiences of learning to scuba dive. But my first photos were so bad that I landed up just taking those videos for about three years and I thought, no, no I, I've got to try this again. So I sat down with some books and I read about how underwater photography works, how the camera settings work. And then I realized I needed to do that that is my first photo that I took. Uh, it's a glass squid and it's really unusual and really rare, but I've, and I've never seen one since then. But uh, yeah, so after doing some reading and studying how the camera worked underwater, it all kind of came together. So I started taking photos and out of strobe with ambient light, learning how ISO, aperture, um, shutter speed work together. And once I understood how that worked, I could adjust my camera so that I could take photos like this um, without having to use a strobe. And it was working pretty well. And people used to say to me, wow, you've got no backscatter in your pictures. And I said, well, I'm not using a strobe, I'm not getting backscatter. But then I went on a deep dive. Up until then, I'd been doing about 15 meters. And then I went on a deep dive and it didn't matter what I did, my eyes, my aperture, I could not get enough light into the camera. So I had a stroke, I was just trying to use it. And then I'm going to use this stroke and I used it for the first time and it was just like a light moment. The colors popped, the details on the subjects just came out 
And I really didn't turn, I didn't look back after that. So my serious underwater photography journey really started. And at that stage, I was still using a Canon S95, which is a compact camera. And it has managed, I was able to grow with that camera. And, and yeah, I've just progressed since then, just doing a lot of reading and research. Okay. This looks like a pink marshmallow, yeah? <laughs> it looks like a marshmallow in the ocean. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a dwarf anemone. Yeah, so it's an anemone. Um, I yes. have a question here from Gus Gonzalez. I'm just going to read it out to you. Gus Gonzalez is asking, Hi, Kate. Do you make changes to your photography setup depending on the subject you'll be shooting during a particular dive? For example, add or remove lights, different lenses, etc. Or is your camera setup always the same and ready for anything? <laughs> well, if I obviously with a with a DSLR, you had to decide whether you're taking macro or wide. So if I'm going to be doing wide, I'm sorry, if I'm going to do, be doing macro, I will sit up with two strobes. Um, or I will set up with a strobe and a snoot. I've got that set up. The only thing I can really do to my setup under the water is to add up to depending on the size of my subject. So I don't, I don't really change anything underwater itself. Um, I'm just interested in what, in what I'm taking because of what I've set up. So then I will look for subjects that suit my camera setup on that dive. Right. Um, we're looking at another question here, Kate. Sorry to interrupt you just now. We've got another question here, and this is from this is from Cape Town, I think. It's Paul Kemney Kennedy. Diving in CT, I assume that's Cape Town, right, Paul? Diving in Cape Town, we often have to deal with less than ideal visibility, especially for video. Any tips? to reduce backscatter and increasing video quality in lower visibility conditions? Or should we just put the equipment away on bad vis days? <gasps> no, never put your equipment away. Something. Look, I don't take a lot of underwater video. Um, my husband's the videographer in the family, so I just land up editing his pictures. But I th think what you need to do when there's low visibility is probably about the same when I'm doing wide angle. I get as close as I possibly can to my subject and I angle my strobes and in your case it will lights behind the of your house. So your aim is to try not to light up the backscatter or the set mirror and the subject. And the way that you can do that is by pulling your strobes back so and pointing them slightly out or if you're using what, sorry, video lights. So you really want to get your video light to fall on your subject, but not light up the water between your subject and your camera. And the same goes for photography as well. Thank you, Kate. I hope that uh, helps to explain uh, your experience, Paul. Now, uh, I noticed here, Charlene Suchi is watching. I think Charlene is from Canada, right? Long time since I've seen your name. Uh, hi, Charlene. Just want to say a shout out to Sh Charlene over there. Now, I'm going to go on a bit further to talk about Kate's favorite dive sites because Kate has been all around the world, right? But uh, apparently, although she's traveled the globe looking for beautiful diving sites, her heart is actually closer to home. Is that right, Kate? It is. Um, I've traveled to a lot of different places and every single place I've been to, I've left a little piece of my Every place has been special. The people I've met, the things I've seen have been amazing. And it's so, I'm so fortunate. I'm so lucky to have been able to do that. But every time I come home, <coughs> home and I go into Falls Bay, I just feel like this is where my heart is. I love the reefs, so colourful, they're so vibrant, they're full of marine life. So yes, where my home is and the reefs here are absolutely beautiful. We've got kelp forests, we've got um, reefs that are 
which is covered with vibrant pinks and purples and oranges and sea fans, full nudibranchs. That's a cuttlefish at one of our dive sites here in False Bay. The dive site is called Steam Brass Deep. And as you can see, the colors are amazing. The, the contrasts against the water are incredible. <clears throat> Interesting to note that our water is more of a temperate green day. We had very um, blue water. Kate. Um, yeah, that, tell us, tell us about this. This is a split level uh, shot. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us more about how you achieve a shot like this? This is like you've got a split oh. level, two different worlds there. <laughs> this is a, a photo photograph I've been trying to take for ages or wanting to take for ages. And it's one of our dive sites along the eastern side of False Bay called um, Blostian. And it's a kelp forest. It's very close to the side, so it's quite shallow. And what I wanted to do was, yes, a split shot like that. But I only really used to go diving with a mini dome port, and I knew I had to get a bigger dome port to take this picture. So I finally got round to getting a port and, and took this, tried to take this picture. And it's actually harder than you think it is because, you know, you've got the sea that's moving a lot. It's not, we don't have mirror flat seas very often. So <laughs> the sea was moving a lot and the set up me. So I was just firing my camera and hoping that I could at least get one good picture. And you know, the only picture that, was, that really worked out. So I can't wait to go back there and, and try again. All right, guys. So we have with here, uh, we, we have with us here, uh, for those of us who join in a little bit later, we have with us here from South Africa, Kate Jonker, who is an award-winning underwater photographer, underwater photography coach, judge as well, and she's also a dive guide. Now, Kate writes as well as taking the photos. She also writes the articles about them. Yeah, so this is Kate Jonker here. If you have any comments or if you want to ask Kate any questions about underwater photography, she's actually the best person to ask. And uh, she's right here. There you are. And then you put your questions into the comments below. We'll be watching it off and on to have a look. I have here, uh, Shemek is here. Shemek from Poland is here and he says, I'm going to have to find that comment, right? But in general, Shemek says he's a fan of your Instagram site. <laughs> Shemek Sistalka from Poland, the underwater photographer whose name is so difficult to pronounce, but I got it right. Okay, we're going to look uh at... We're going to look at some of Kate's favorite photos. Let's have a look at some of Kate's favorite photos. And as we put the photos up on screen, Kate can give some running commentary on how she took it or what she liked about this. Go ahead, Kate. Yes, so this is a gas flame moody bank. They're very common here. And there's so much fun to shoot because you get blue and yellow ones like this. You get um, orange and white ones. And you also get sort of a paler color. <clears throat> and I took this photo with a snoot and it just brings out the colors and the textures and yeah, snoot photography for me is, is really a lot of fun. Kate, I have a question here for you yeah. and uh, this uh, question comes from Gus Gonzalez. I, I'm, I think Gus Gonzalez, if I'm not mistaken, he's a technical diver, right Gus? You're a technical diver and uh, Gus has been with us uh, doing some live stream for Orca Torch. He's asking you about uh, whether you're depend how much you're depending on the equipment. So I'm going to read the question again. Kate, percentage-wise, what would you say is the breakdown between technique and equipment when it comes to shooting amazing underwater pictures? Is it 50-50? No, not at all. I would say 80 to 90% is technique. Because if you don't know how, you can have the most expensive camera and if you don't know how to use it, ever going to be able to take photos or good photos, let's say. You can have the cheapest camera and really know how to use it and take amazing photos. So it's more about your technique and understand and the settings that you need to use for your subject or the type of picture you're going to take. 
would definitely say technique is definitely far more important than equipment. However, you need to have the right lenses if you're going to take macro photos or super macro photos to LAR. And if you want to take wide angle with a GSLR, then you need wider lens. So but then again, if you don't know how to use it, you will never come with real lens. So uh, when it comes to the medium of water, right, we are faced with even more challenges than what we face on land because water is more dense, so subjects appear closer and of course lights don't travel as far so that's why for divers right we need really strong lights like what orca torch has right the when it comes to lumens we need the 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 highest lumens so that it can pierce through the dense water right so you know kid kid uh what what do you think about that how 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 is lighting uh what how do you think it affects your underwater photography Yes, lighting is really important. I think, you know, lighting, they were okay, but they weren't great. And my advice to anybody is always get lighting for two reasons. Firstly, if you have a tool, like you can use it as a focus light and that will help your camera focus so much more quickly underwater. Um, back to the type of lead, always go for the best. Go for the strongest that you can, because what happens then is you can adjust your camera according to the amount of And most torches, especially the orca torches, you've got different beam strengths. So you can tone it down if you want. There's nothing worse than going out with a torch and it's not bright enough and it's just not working and then going and having to buy another one. So it's important to get a really good torch. I have a question here from Charlene and uh, she's asking about night diving. So her question is, how is the visibility for night diving? How would you change your setup for diving at night? Tricky one. <laughs> I wouldn't really change my setup at all. I think what's the visibility during a night dive, visibility during daylight, as in the water clarity, but obviously because it's dark you can't see anything so you need to have a torch to find yourself find your way around so the first thing that you would really need is a really good torch not only to to find your way around and to find critters on the reef but also to help your camera focus quickly um, your camera needs to see contrast in order to focus and if it can't see the contrast it's not going to focus properly so your torch is creating that contrast on your subject and it helps your camera take a picture. So yeah, it's not really that different. It just is really important that you have a good torch that you can use on your night dive. Kate, over here, we have a very interesting story. Uh, this is a manatee. And I understand Kate has gone through great lengths for this shot. And there's also a lesson that as underwater photographers, we can learn. So, Kate, tell us your adventure over here. Yeah, so when I, the first day I walked into the dive center when I signed up for my open water course, I saw this magazine and inside it was about dugongs and manatees and how they, the manatees in Florida, they hug you to death. And I was like, wow, that's really exciting, but it's also not so exciting. And I, couldn't go to Florida to see them, but I was a regular diver in the Red Sea. And I found out that dugongs are a cousin of manatees. So let, I decided I was going to go and find the dugong. But it's not that easy because there's so few of them. I think I went to Egypt 15 times and never saw a dugong. And at that, that stage, I was writing for X-Ray Dive magazine. And I said to them, OK, fine, I write about it for you. And they said, oh, yeah, we'd love that. And I did some research and I found out where the possibility of seeing dugong would be. And we landed in, in Cairo and went over to Marsa Alam and went straight to the center. And I said to them, I, I, I'm here to see And they said, can you be ready in an hour? And I thought, oh, I haven't even unpacked. It takes me an hour to get my kid. But yes, I'll be here. So I went down to the dive center in less than 
in an hour because I was so excited. And we were putting our stuff on that was going to take us out to see the dugong. And the skipper said, it's here. And it's like, I got goosebumps all over me because I could maybe going to see one. And I said to him, how do you know there's a dugong here? And he said, you see all those people swimming on the water? They're chasing the dugong that's on the bottom. So they were snorkelers and they'd been taken out to search for the dugong. So we went out in this little boat and we came alongside the snorkelers. And I looked down, there was this white shape under the water and it came up towards our boat. And it was a dugong. And I couldn't believe it. Just so mainly at last, I got to see one and I got to write the article too. And um, I kind of get a bit emotional sometimes when I see something special. So I must admit, I did cry a little bit in my mask before I went into the water. Um, but yeah, it was it was an incredible experience. And I think, you know, if you want to see something and you do a lot of research and you, your chances of finding something really special are improved. So never give up. If you haven't seen that special thing yet, keep on looking and hopefully you'll find it. So true, so true. So it's a little bit of luck sprinkled mm -hmm. in, a lot of research, a lot of preparation and a heck of a lot of perseverance, right, Kate? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's underwater view. It's, it's perseverance through and through. Now, for our viewers out there, what we're going to do <laughs> next, right, is prepare for the gift away for tonight. Now, before we go and show you the giveaway, I'm going to talk to you about the giveaway torch itself, and that is the D530V, it's an underwater video light. I will show you the D530 first, show it to you so that you know what we're giving away. So here it is. Now, guys and girls, this is the D530V underwater video light and it's got a maximum lumens of 1200 with 140 degrees super wide beam. I'm going to show it to you here. Okay, keep in mind that in the water, it is a little bit different because water is more dense, you know. And this is the snoot that comes with it. Hang on, let me show you the full picture. Okay, here we go. So this is the snoot. This is the D530. So it's operated by the side switch. You've got two brightness levels. And further to that, you've got a snoot that you attach to the front of the torch. You just have to rotate it in. And this is the D530V that we are giving out tonight. Now, one of the awesome features about the D530V is the battery. Because when I take out the battery to show it to you, you will notice that this torch does not come with a charger because this torch battery is a charger on its own. This torch can be charged using a micro USB cable. So I'm just going to put the micro USB cable through here. Okay. And this part goes onto your power bank. So you, are, you don't have to be carrying an additional charger with you. So this is how we charge the D530V. Okay, so this is the torch that we are giving away tonight. Okay, I'm going to put it up on screen because do you know what time this is? This is giveaway time. Alright, so we've got two lucky winners that we're going to award the D530 under video light to tonight. So, now the first question we have two sessions of the giveaway. This session, I will ask the question. The next session, right, Kate will be asking the question. And Kate's question is going to be tougher. Okay, so you've got to pay attention during our brief because the question is based on what you see, what you hear. So I'm going to ask this question. The person who answers the question the fastest and most accurate, right, you will be the winner of the first D530V. I want to also say that if you win it for this session, you are not eligible for the following session. 
Okay, so which means you cannot be taking home two D five thirty Vs tonight. All right. Okay. So, are you ready for the question? I'm going to ask you the question, and the person who answers it the fastest and most accurate, you will be bringing back the D five thirty V. Okay. Now, what is the maximum lumens of the D five thirty V? Type it out into the comments box. Okay, we're going to we're going to find out. We're going to find out and let's see whether we have anybody who is going to win. Okay, we're going to check. All right, we are going to check, but I'm going to ask, uh, I'm going to show you uh, Orca Torture's social media handles just for you to check out. We're going to put their social media handles out there. So in case, or not say in case, I mean so that you know where if you want to follow Orca Torch on social media, you will know their Instagram, you will know their Facebook. Okay, I'm going to put that up now. Social media handles. Okay, we're going to put this up. And Kate, right, the next question I'll be asking you is, what's your favorite Orca Torch? Torch. I'm going to put the social media handles up here first. Okay, so just let you... Have a look at this. Okay, so we're going to see. I think we have a few people who are already winners over here. I think I'm just going to make sure that we've got. Yeah. Okay, so let's move on to the next item. We're going to announce the winners shortly, right? But let's move on and talk with Kate because Kate is here and we want to know what is her favorite torch. What is your favorite Orca torch, torch Kate? Uh, it's really difficult to, to choose one. Um, I love this new torch. It's amazing. But if I really, really had to choose one, then it would be the D900V because it does so much. It's got a red light, it's got a UV light, a blue light, it's got a wide beam, a narrow beam, and I can use it for so much. I use it as a focus light, I use it as a creative lighting. For example, that picture there is I put the red light on and I put the narrow white beam on, which you can do at the same time. And it, what happened is the red light colored in the background and the white beam, the narrow white beam, lit up my subject in the middle. So the color in the middle is actually the true color of the, the critter, which happens to be a hot lip spider crab. And then the, the, the rest of it is the red from the actual torch. So, yeah, I, lo I love it because it's so reliable and it just does so many different things for me. So... You know, if you only if you only get one orca torch, this is the one that you need to get. Um, bought that one, you're going to want to buy another because there is so many amazing orca torches out there. Yeah. So, uh, um, so Kate, that was the torch. I'm going to show the viewers the torch that you just mentioned. So we're going to we're going to show this to you now. And again, make sure you pay attention. Uh, to the details that we're going to show you here. Okay, so I'm going to show you the torch right now. And this is the D900V. This is the D900V. And it is characterized by the multiple lights that you have here. Okay, so I'm going to show you, right? You've got two switches over here. And these switches operate two pairs of lights. You've got the... You've got a red light. So this switch will operate the red light over here. You've got a red light, right? Yeah. So... At the same time, you will notice as, a, as an underwater photographer, you are behind the light, right? So you will know that the light is switched on by the LED over here. I'm going to press the left switch again, 
and this will turn on the UV light. And then you have the right switch. I'm going to switch this on. Now this, whoa, this is a flood light. So it's got a, it's like a flood effect, you know, it's very soft, it's perfect for underwater videography as well. Because as underwater videographers, we want, you know, a soft spread of light. And if you want it to be a diving light, a very straight and narrow beam, this is the one, right? So it also tells you that you've got this light switch on. Okay, so this is the D900V. And the unique part about the D900V, right, is it uses a magnetic charging cable. So this is a magnetic charging cable whereby when I just, and that's how we charge the battery. So this is a unique thing about the D900V because it does not require you to remove the battery. All you need to do is attach the magnetic charging cable and the torch will be charging. And this is the D910V, which Kate will be talking to you about later. This is also one of our favorite lights. It also uses the magnetic charging cable to charge. So both the D900V and the D910V uses the magnetic charging cable. In brief, let me show you the specifications for the D900V. Okay, so it uses a magnetic charging cable to charge the battery. So this is a 2200 lumens light, this guy here. They look the same, very similar. But the very big difference is when you turn it, when you look at the bulbs, right, they are really different. So this is the D900V, you've got four different lighting modes over here. Now, since we are into gear and equipment, right, it's time for Kate to share with us her photo bag, what she keeps in her dive bag in terms of camera. So this is Kate's underwater camera rig. And let's see. Kate, <laughs> let us know what is all this about? <laughs> okay. So um, the camera that I use is the Nikon D850. And for my macro setup, I normally use either a 60mm macro lens or a 105mm macro lens. And on top of that, I might use a diopter depending on the, sub the size of my subject. So the diopter magnifies whatever I'm taking a picture of. And then, of course, I always use my uh, Orca Torch D910V or my Orca Torch D900V. Um, both of them are amazing because they take magnetic um, charging, which is so easy to be unscrewed. So there's no O-rings that you need to worry about once you've got, you know, you're charging your camera. I have um, an ISOL to have, which I absolutely love. It, it is the most sturdy, easy that I've ever used. And about it, it, it looks fancy but it's really, really simple so if anything wrong you can basically off or send it to to the dealer and they'll fix it for you if it's something really serious not that it should of course i use float arms just to help balance my rig under the water and my orca torch snoop torch my orca torch d909 10 V and yeah, that's, that's it. I, I also use wide angle lenses and dome ports as well when I'm taking wide angle photos. That's it. Kate, um, do you, do you by any chance have your dome port there? I, I don't, I don't see a dome port. 
No, I didn't. I didn't bring it down with me. Okay, that's all right. So the dome port is what you use to take the uh, split level photo, right? For those of you interested. Yes. So the dome port is for wide angle water photography. Wide angle underwater photography. I use a Nikon eight to fifteen mil circular fisheye lens, which is a great good quality wide angle lens, which I absolutely love because you can make circular pictures and you can get really close to your subject with the lens. And then I also use a mini dome port, which is really small. It's probably about this small. I don't know how to show it on the screen, but it's really small. And I use that for close focus wide angle. And you can basically focus your camera on the, the dome of the port so you can get really close to things like nudibranchs and make them look really big in the picture. And, and use a dome port when I'm just normal split shots and um, normal wide angle underwater photography. Now we've got an interesting question here and this is about UV. I'm not sure uh, whether you've uh, have experience with UV, but somebody is, somebody is asking here, we have Paul Sorensen. Kit, here, have you used UV light much in your photography? If so, what is the coolest critter under UV? Cool. I, I haven't. Um, I did give it a go in the Red Sea, and the coolest critter that I saw was the guy in front of me with some white shorts. Um, <laughs> just kidding. Um, yeah, it, because it, it need to have a yellow um, filter on the front of your camera to be able to pick up the different types of, of um, phosphorus under the water. So I haven't, I've tried it, but for me, it didn't really work. But I'd love to give it a go again. I think if I have that yellow filter, I could and some really cool critters. I'd love to see how um, some of the nudibranchs and the corals on our reef flourish. I think there's, there, there is a photographer in Cape Town, Piet van Eerden, who has done this really quite successfully, um, but I haven't, I haven't given it much of a go yet. Okay, this, this guy looks like he wants to cross the road. Kid, what's, what's happening here? <laughs> so this is an, a tiny, tiny, elegant nudibranch. And he was probably about half a centimeter long. And he was trying to get to that. I don't know if you can see on the right hand side there. He was trying to get to that part of the reef. He was on a little leaf there. And it was just so cute to, to see how he was stretching himself from the one part of the, to the actual reef. And it's quite amazing what nudibranchs can do. They can really stretch and they can stick onto things. Just you won't believe it. They can stick onto the surface of the water and yeah so that's what that little one was doing he was just trying to get to the other side ah we're going to announce the winner we're going to announce the winner for tonight's giveaway this is the first session and kate will be handling the second session right kate's question is tougher so the first winner for tonight's live stream would be Kurt Storms, you win a D530V! Yay! Congratulations! Kit, 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 3, 2, 1. Yay! Congratulations, Kurt Storms! <laughs> Alright, good job, good job. Now, we're going to go on to the next uh, question that we're going to ask Kit, right? Okay, now, as an underwater photographer, I'm sure the challenges are so many, right? You've got so many challenges. Now, can you talk to us about the challenges that you face when you're taking your photos? Yeah, I think the, the biggest challenge that us, us as underwater photographers all face is not bottom time. I mean, most of my dives range from 15 meters to 30 meters. So we don't get too long to dive on the reef. So you know, I'm just starting to get into it and then it's time to, to come up sometimes or it takes a while to find a crew for. So the biggest challenge is bottom time, first of all. And we also have quite a bit of surge sometimes. Trying to focus on tiny critters with a 105mm macro lens and a diopter can also be quite challenging in itself. 
And so, yeah, I think those those are the challenges that I face. And another one is in Cape Town, we can't have every day like Philippines um, and places like that. So whenever we can water, um, my challenge is I just wish there was more more time to go diving. Okay, so next, right, we're going to ask Kit about uh, this one. This one, this is going to be a question that I think should be easy for you, Kit. Uh, what is your favorite, what's your favorite orca torch? torch? So my favorite orca torch is the D900V, um, which, is, which is really good. I was showing in that picture back there, if you want to go back to it, that would be nice to chat about that one as well um, so that was the orca torch um, 570gl which is an amazing torch if you're leading divers or leading underwater photographers because not only does it have a really strong beam to search for critters on the reef um, and to to highlight them for photographers and, and people that you're guiding you it also has the green laser which just helps pinpoint the the um, the critters. So this is a photo that I took of my dive buddy Yaku, who we've been diving with. I've been diving with him for about twenty years. We did our advanced course together way many many years ago, and um, he willingly modelled this for me. But yeah, that that's a really great torch to get if you're going to be diving with other underwater photographers and you're leading them, or if you're just taking other underwater or divers on a dive. It's excellent. Kate, you have uh, with you the D910V, right? This, these two torches are very similar. You've got a D900. Can you point to it? Yes. Okay, hold on. Let's Sorry, start. I'm trying to get... Okay, that, we, that, is, that is the... Yeah. Hundred, and this is the, which is the one with all the different um, lights and things. And here is the D910V which is the video light, which is absolutely brilliant, um, especially if you're doing, I love it for macro um, video, which I'm starting to get into. And what I love about them is they're so reliable and all orca torches are so reliable and rugged. And these two, especially the 900 and the 910V are so easy to use and easy to charge. They're the two um, orca torches that have the magnetic charging and um, yeah, really both fantastic to use underwater. Mm -hmm. And since we've seen the D900V, uh, what we want to see now is the D910V. Now I, I'm seeing again, these two torch are very, they look very similar, but again, they are very, very different from each other in terms of usage. One is a multi-purpose light with four different types of lights and over here this is a more focused light a focus meaning that its main aim is to give you a wide bright light okay i'm going to show it to you now and then we're going to look at the specs okay so this is the d let's check it out yeah correct okay <laughs> this is the d 900 v you will notice that uh, it's only got one one type of light in here and one switch, right? So this switch, straight away, it gives you maximum lumens followed by lower brightness level and then lower brightness level, finally off. So it's a, it's a very purposeful light. It's meant to give out a very bright and a very soft and a very white light. Dropping the lumens. Right, okay, now I'm going to show you the specs for the D910V. Now, the D910V has 5000 lumens maximum brightness with a 120 degree wide angle beam. Also, you notice that you'll notice that it uses a magnetic charging cable. Go. That's the D910V.
Okay, uh, so we're going to look at have you have you experienced this kid? Uh, Leaping here says that we discovered laser beam can drive away trigger fish. So that's good news. Uh, how are you with trigger fish over there, Kate? All the way in South Africa. We don't have trigger fish here, um, but I have come across them in the Red Sea. Um, I don't know. I haven't tried that with a trigger fish. That's a pretty good idea, actually, especially when they're they're digging their nests and you get a little bit close. I've seen some people. So yeah, I'll I'll remember next time I go to the Red Sea or somewhere where they have trigger fish to take one of those with me and you know just pull it out of my pocket if I see one coming. Yeah, um, I can I can relate to you, Leaping, because uh, in Malaysia, right, trigger fish is like scourge of divers. You know, we are all like, oh my goodness, it's trigger fish again, and we don't know where their boundaries are. You know, you could just enter into triggerfish territory without knowing about it. It's invisible lines, right? And, um, well, uh, <laughs> yeah, they, they come at you. And, okay, Leaping here says uh, that you can scare away triggerfish with the laser. I, I have yet, I have had many encounters with triggerfish, but uh, I wasn't fast enough to pull out the trigger, I mean the laser, you know. So, uh, well, that's something to keep into consideration. Uh, the the laser. Okay, now uh, we're going to look at. Now this is this is a very unique photo, Kate, and this was taken with your D five thirty with the snoot. Uh, can you tell us more about this? It looks like a planet, right? But it's actually in. <laughs> yeah, I call that one uh, Moonwalker. And it's a little amphipod. I don't know if you get them where you dive, but it's like a little flea that's jumping around on the reef. And, and there's a lot of them and they're all different colors. So it's probably about two millimeters long. And it's sitting on a cuttlefish egg. And I just, I took it, I actually had a TG5 at the time. Um, I'd just taken it into the water with me. And I had my Orc torch, um, D530B snoot torch, and I lit it with that. And that's the result. That is so, so nice and I'm sure it is a challenge to take a photo like that. Let's have a look at the, the, the next photo over here and, and see uh, what Kate has to, what adventures Kate had with this. Ah, look at that. Can you tell us Kate, yes. uh, how you get, how did you manage to get such a contrasting photo and how you get the black background? Well, I used the, the, the Orca Torch D530V with that. So what you do is you, sh you push up your shutter speed so that it's fast enough to drown out any ambient light, so any background light. So what happens then is the only light that you're going to capture with your camera is the light of the snoo torch, which is the beauty of snooting, um, is that you can actually point your snoot at the subject and that will light up your subject, but it won't light up your background. And the trick to that is having a fast shutter speed to drown out any extra light at all. So that's a, that's a blue gas flame um, that I took in, in Cape Town. And this one, Kit, how about this? Um, yes. Same, exactly the same setup, exactly the same dive. Uh, this is just an orange version of the previous nude bank, orange gas flame. And again, just lighting up my subject with the snoot torch. And yes, so this is an example of what you can do if you take the snoot adapter off the front of the torch. You can still use it to take macro photos. So it's really versatile. And so Kate, uh, with the photos that we've been showing our viewers, the past few photos, the three, four photos that we had, uh, you are using the D530V to help you get those photos, right? And yes. I'd like the viewers to have a look at the, at the torch over here. We're going to show you the torch in close-up, how, how Kate used this D530V to get her photos. So this is the D530V and this one comes with a snoot. So we've got the torch here and we've got the snoot here and this torch uses a rechargeable battery which can be charged with a power bank. So the battery is in there and you can fit the 
USB, mini USB, USB mini cable to it. Now, we're going to... Yeah, so, right, Kate, um, I'm, I think, ma they are, they are, I think from here, right, there are a few viewers who are quite interested to take up or already have taken up underwater uh, photography, but we want to know from your point of view, right, um, uh, okay, we want to know from your point of view, what advice would you give, right, to those who want to take up this as a hobby or maybe in the future become professionals as well? What would your advice be? I think, you know, when you're, when you're starting off with underwater photography, it's really important to have good buoyancy so that you don't go around bashing things on the reef. Um, buoyancy is really important. And then the next step is to decide what type of pictures you want to take. Do you want to get into the water and just take pictures without having to worry about settings or anything like that? then you would go for a camera like a TG from Olympus. Or if you wanted to start develop, delving into um, underwater photography and taking it further, then you could look at a compact camera um, and learning how all the settings work. I think also what's really important is to um, do a course, go on a workshop, learn how it works. It'll help you save a lot of time and a lot of tears um, when you're, you know, if your photos are not working out and you don't know why, a workshop is a really good thing to go on. Um, yeah, and, I, and also what I did is I, I read a lot. So you, you should read a lot. Keep on learning. I'm always learning. Um, even though I teach workshops myself, I still go um, and attend other people's workshops too so that I can keep learning from them as well. So there's lots of things that you can do. And dash to buy the most expensive camera, buy what you can afford and grow with it. Um, one thing I would suggest is if you start buying strobes, the expensive strobe you can get because that will grow with you, with your system as you do progress through your underwater photography journey. There you have it from Kate Jonker of South Africa under water underwater photographer and Kate is also a writer and in her spare time she skippers dive boats <laughs> very talented lady okay now um, uh, we are gonna have our giveaway so this is the next session Kate are you are you ready to ask your incredibly is everyone else ready right sorry uh, so yeah, can I ask my question? Yes, okay. Uh, let me tell, so, wait, wait. Let me tell the, the, let me tell the viewers first, right? Okay, now, this is the final giveaway for tonight. This is the final giveaway for tonight. And if you have won previously, you cannot win again. <laughs> okay, now, the winner for this last session will bring home a D530V underwater video light. Okay, now, Kate will be asking you a question. As soon as Kate has asked the question, you can type your answer into the comments box and the fastest person with the most accurate answer will be winning the D530V. Are you ready, Kate? I'm ready. So my question is, what are the Orca Torch dive lights that have magnetic charging? Shall I repeat that? Yes. Which Orca Torch dive lights have magnetic charging? And now we wait and we see if we have any questions uh, while we wait for the answers to come in. <laughs> Kid, um, what do you say to photographers, underwater photographers? Because we, we, we have come across comments, right, where underwater photographers tell us, that because their cameras are so sensitive to, to, to light, they don't need additional lights to help them take good photos. What do you think about that? Well, I just look at my own personal experience and um, I just found that, yes, I was able to take pictures without a torch and with just the camera on its own to a certain degree. And the photos were fine. There was nothing wrong with them, but they just didn't, they lacked that punch. 
So for me, it's really important to add some light to my pictures. It's a personal thing, but by someone, if they want to take photos that pop, photos with color, photos with texture, you do need to add some additional lighting, whether it's a torch or a strobe, you really should look at something like that. It will really help your photography. And definitely a focus light to help your camera focus much quicker really, really helps as well. Yes, definitely lighting is important to me. Kit, I have another question here, right? Um, and I'm not sure whether in your part of the world you will face something like this because um, for us, uh, we need to be diving with like-minded people as in the, the entire group are underwater photographers. If, for example, in your group, you're the only underwater photographer, uh, when you dive in, you tend, to be, you tend to get left behind and you better know the reef very well. <laughs> how, 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 what do you think about that? Uh, do you face something like that? Um, well, we, dif we dive quite differently here in Cape Town where divers are allowed to dive in buddy pairs. So you'll roll over back into the water and you and your buddy will go and explore the on your own if you're doing that. Otherwise, you can follow a dive guide. Normally, we, if you're not with your normal buddy or if you don't have a permanent buddy, we tend to buddy people up together who we think have the same diving experience. So the divers go off and they, they do their diving. And if there are photographers, then we tend to pair the, the photographers up together. Um, we're not limited to our air. We're more limited to dive time, bottom time. So it's not normally a case of one diver finishing their quick, you know, holding someone else up or, or making someone else's dive finish quicker. So what we do is we tend to dive together as photographers and if a photographer comes and dives with us and they don't have anyone to dive with, I will dive with them. So, you know, on our boat, a photographer comes along and they want to dive, there will always be someone who will dive with them and will dive at their pace. Uh, so you will never be left behind as a photographer. Great. Now, uh, we're going to be announcing the winners soon. And if there's anyone out there who would like to ask Kate any questions pertaining to underwater photography, now's your chance. Now's your chance to catch Kate and ask her the difficult questions. <laughs> have, you, have you talked about this photo, Kate? I don't think so. Okay, tell us more about no. that. So yeah, this is this is one of my latest pictures and it's a little fish called the chubby kingfish. And I've been looking for one of those for quite a while. Um, the last time I saw them, I didn't have my camera with me. And this fish is probably about a centimeter long. It's absolutely tiny. And I only saw it because of its color. It was contrasting with, with the um, purple that it's sitting on there. And I watched him swimming around the reef and I took quite a few pictures of him. Really, really cute. Uh, yeah, this is this is typical of my kind of um, photos. I particularly like um, characters and little critters like this. You know, trying to trying to capture their personalities. And I just noticed now this one's got a little bit of sand on his bottom lip, so it's, it it adds a little bit of cuteness, I guess, to <laughs> it too. Is that a, that is a grain of sand? Is it? It's it's a grain of sand. <laughs> 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 Under the jaw, right? <laughs> For the rest of us, right? This is uh, Kate Jonker from South Africa, underwater photographer and writer as well. So if you've got questions about underwater photography, well, put them into the comments because uh, we are looking at the comments right now. And if there's anything, Kate can help you out, especially when it comes to shooting photos under the ocean. Kate, would you want to say anything to your viewers before we announce the winner? I think, you know, don't ever give up in your under photography. Try new things and keep pushing yourself because that's the only way to learn. But most of all, enjoy your underwater photography. There's nothing worse than not enjoying what you're doing. And if you get to a stage where you're not enjoying it, 
or try something different. But never give up and you'll keep on growing and you'll love it more and more as you grow. So keep up the good work. Yeah, fantastic advice. It's, it's about perseverance. It's about practice making perfect, you know. Right, okay. Now, uh, we are going to announce the winner for tonight. This is the final winner to be bringing back the D530V underwater video light. Kate, are you ready? We're going to show it on screen. Okay, the winner for tonight to win a D530V, the final winner for tonight is... OFAC Lipas. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> Congratulations. Do you, you, you know him? You know her? Yes, I know him. We've been chatting about this talk actually. So I'm really excited that he's won it. Well done. All right. Congratulations. Did, did I pronounce yeah. his name right? <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. Sorry if I didn't. So we, okay, any, any other questions before we complete our live stream? Oh, okay. Uh, we've got one more question here, Kate, and this is coming from my favorite dive instructor in Malaysia, Ivan Fung, has asked this question. How do you normally position the snoot right on top in front of the subject? It's a bit, a little bit difficult to you but what we do is I'll take it and it really depends if I want a circular pool of light over my subject I will hold it directly over the subject um, but if I want a more of a elongated um, pool of light then I will point it like this so the it just depends on the type of effect that you want to to get um, and it's, it's great it's it's really very yeah hope that answers your question ivan and uh well we want to thank all our viewers for joining us in this live stream with underwater photographer kate jonker kate thanks so much for thank you for having me okay so uh kate would you want to wish our viewers a good night good morning good afternoon <laughs> <laughs> wherever you are in the world enjoy the rest of your day have a good night if you're just about to go to bed and thank you so much for joining us it's been lovely i appreciate all your questions and if you have any more questions you can look for me on instagram and dm me i'd love to help you and thanks very much to orca torch for your support it's been fantastic i love your products and yeah baron yeah we you're so professional Thank you so much for having me. Oh, you're, much, you're very welcome. It is an honor, but we want to show uh, the viewers your social media handle. So let's have a look at your slide over here. Uh, I'm going to try and look for it. I'm going to put your slide up here to show them your social media handle. Yeah, this is it. This is it. Okay, so this is, this is kids. This is Kate's Instagram. Just going to show it to you. If you are you want to follow Kate on Instagram, this is her Kate Jonker Photography, and we're going to show you uh, Orca Torture's social media handles, so that uh, you will you can keep in touch with us, you can keep in contact, and so that you can get updates with Orca Torch. All right, now. It's time to say, over here in Malaysia, it's good night. So it's time to say good night. I wish everyone a good night and dive safe. So it's Baron and Kate signing off with Orca Torch. Good night. Bye.